I'm losing it right now. Uh, we don't want any of this. Okay, a little quiet. Here we go. True that. The rise to go near. She hasn't tried anything funny, but that's what bothers me most. In particular, what does she have to gain by coming to Mother Base? I first thought she was under orders from Cypher to take you out. She didn't manage it in Afghanistan, so round two happens here. So I lighten the guard, and that lock on her door is a joke. You gave her an opening, and? Well, she hasn't killed you yet. And I hate to say it, but she's had plenty of chances. You made me the bait. Poisonous bait. What better? Anyway, she didn't bite. Quiet is keeping her silence. So I'm left with no idea again what she's doing here. We tried communicating with her through writing. That didn't work either. Whether she's illiterate, dyslexic, or just plain stubborn, she won't cooperate. I just don't get it. If she tried to contact the outside, it'd be picked up by our counterintelligence net. But it's clean. There's no sign she's had contact with the staff base facilities, nothing. She's almost got the men wanting her to try something, just to find out what she's up to. And she's in there putting on the failed soldier look, all downcast eyes and defeated sides. But she doesn't kill herself. She can't be trying to leave Cypher and surrender to us. <laughs> so what's the verdict? This may sound optimistic, but here's how I see it. Quiet came here to fulfill some objective. To kill you, maybe to destroy Diamond Dogs. Whatever it was, before she could do it, something changed her mind. Yes. When I look at her, I sense hesitation. You think she betrayed Cypher? Can't say for sure. I prefer the ones that talk. Anyway, we'll keep her under watch. And we're also looking into those special abilities of hers. You'll be the first to know if something comes up. Why not look in on her yourself once in a while? Right. I'm gonna hold on. Uh, let me just search something real quick. Welcome home, boss. Can I? Um, it's not quite what I wanted, but thanks. Damn dog. Okay. Good job. Damn, that is one fucked up bug. Good, good, good. Where is the cells? Like, I don't know where... where the cells would even be. They would... Pr medical... It's either medical or combat, really. Marker placed. 
I'll take a look around the medical place. There better be a fucking vehicle somewhere nearby. <laughs> While I'm doing it, I will, uh... Put on some more...
Those AI weapons I'd made in Costa Rica were like toys by comparison. A whole world apart from reptilian four-legged crawling and, and that ridiculous hunched over bipedal waddling. My design evolved to the dawn of mankind. Sahelanthropus, the first steps towards humanity. An upright bipedal weapon system. Originally, Sahelanthropus was going to be a manned weapons platform. I designed a cockpit in its head, and I planned to fill it with water as a buffering agent. Like how Paz modified Zeke for human control. Don't compare me to some amateur. I designed it for human control from the beginning. The problem was miniaturizing the posture control AI. You remember the reptile pod? The AI that controlled your unmanned weapons. Attaching it externally makes it vulnerable, so this time I wanted it beneath the armor. Meaning I had to make the AI smaller. I got it down to less than a tenth the size without any loss in computation speed. But it was still too big for the cockpit. There wasn't enough room for the pilot. If I made the head bigger, its body would have to be bigger to support it. Uh, too big to be practical. In the end, human piloting was taken off the table. I tested a remote control system too, but there was the time lag and I wasn't satisfied with its precision either. Plus, it would be useless if the enemy jammed it. So next, I went back to trying an AI-only system. To do that, I had the AI pods recovered from Nicaragua. This was a hybrid AI, a combination of Peace Walker's reptile and mammal pods. The only AIs that had ever successfully operated an unmanned nuclear weapon system. Really? You'd need some help to get that working. Expert help. Did you work with someone? I worked alone. You did that yourself? <laughs> That's the thing. The AI didn't pan out in the end either. But I did finally get Sahelanthropus walking by folding over its upper body to lower its center of gravity. The first upright bipedal locomotive weapon system in the history of mankind. I guess technically it falls into the anthropoid ape category. I don't see the benefit of having it stand taller. On terrain with significant differences in elevation like Afghanistan, you need a body that's vertically adaptable. That also lets it attack from long range while using mountain ridges for cover. So, making it walk upright was the most important factor in giving it superior height capability. As the name suggests, that was the whole point of Sahelanthropus. But I was being pushed for results. Having the AI mounted externally would have been the fastest way to get it working. I just needed more data so it could maintain its balance. But Skullface refused to wait. He dismissed the idea of AI control and took Sahelanthropus away from me before I could finish it. But it was walking when it came after you. That's just it. I don't understand how Skullface got it to move upright without a pilot or an AI. And walking at that speed, too. It's beyond anything I could have imagined. This is like the Wright brothers making it to the moon. I'm just as clueless as you are. So this Soholanthropus, where is it now? I have no idea. All my experiments took place at that cave. I've never seen it anywhere else. Besides... It's still just an incomplete prototype at this point, and nothing but a paper tiger. Even if it can walk, it's far from being a viable weapons platform. It wouldn't be useful in actual battle. Emmerich will remain here at Mother Base for now, but not as a member of Diamond Dogs. I still don't trust him. That work for you? Fine by me. He can't be allowed any contact with staff either. Yeah. A lot of the guys would love some payback for nine years ago. We still need him alive. But we have to restrict his movements. He can only go where we tell him. And of course, the interrogations will continue. He worked for that skull bastard for nearly a decade. He still has more to tell us. How long are we gonna press him? If our investigation shows he really had nothing to do with the attack, we'll reconsider his place here. But I don't expect that to happen. Remember that water tank-shaped object in Emmerich's lab in the Soviet base camp? The thing that started talking to you like a possessed answering machine. That was a pod belt for housing the AI used to control unmanned weapons. 
You remember, back in 74. Yeah, hold on real quick. The hell is playing that music? Obviously knows I'm here. Where's the music coming from? It was good, huh? Not gonna say shit to me. Why not? Well then. Do, do, do. Is this just what's playing over the loudspeaker, or is it just for this bitch? Either way. So what the hell's all this about? You know, now that I'm here, I may as well take a look around, right? The fuck? Uh... Hi? Who in the fuck? Snake? Huh? <laughs> Pass. Yeah, it's hello. Her. It's her. What about the bomb? We were able to remove the explosives. Both of them. What? I thought she Bomb. No, no, no. no but I saw okay. that bitch explode. There's another in my Oh. Oh, uh, that's literally a trigger word for her. I see. Ouch. How come we didn't see this before? Also, say hi to boss. Sort of. Yeah, that guy. He's the boss. Oh. Are we going where I think we... Yeah. Dude! Remember at the end? I said, what is it? In a fucking womb or some shit? I wasn't fucking kidding. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Literally watch the video and I say it. No! 
Don't say the word, damn it. Okay, what the fuck was all this? Oh, uh, it was. Uh, yeah, I figured as much. Yeah. It wasn't her exploding, it was the bomb that they fired at us. The water hard, and somehow she managed to survive. Anyway, the shock triggered some kind of amnesia. Snake? Where is Professor Galvez? You mean, yeah, she still thinks it's 1974. She's got no memory of anything before that either. Cipher, the KGB. Damn. Nothing. It looks to be a kind of dissociative disorder. Dissociative amnesia, where memories are blocked out to protect the mind, and dissociative identity disorder, where the whole personality changes. What we're seeing seems to be a combination of the two. She truly believes she's nothing more than a student living in 1974. Please stay with the lawyer fund. I hope we can do it again. She doesn't respond Jeez. to anything that conflicts with her internal timeline. The doctor's pretty sure she's not faking it. If she had her memory, just think what she could tell us about Cypher. The photo was from that guy you brought back. Yeah, but if she had one, just think other about other all the other fucked up shit. you can show her do you have something to show me snake this did no <laughs> I give up. she's all yours hey no I ain't about Cosby it you know what I'm saying I ain't about that life. Well, got something to show me, Snake? Isn't that fucking strange? This photo, it is from the other day, right? I like it a lot. I look kind of silly, but it's got a peaceful feel to it. Oh my. Peace day was a lot of fun. Everyone cheered at the end, even though I missed a few high notes. We should have more events like that, Snake. <sighs> I am so tired. I will just lie here a while. You just threw my picture on the ground, bitch. You need to not do that. <laughs> Damn it. You were saying? To be honest, guy of being so. Uh huh. Well, I'm getting creeped out, so I'm going to leave. <laughs> so So in a sleep 
it kind of comes back to her a little bit. Man, that's fucked up, man. Welp. Anyway, I was gonna listen to the rest of these uh, tapes, so I'm a I'm gonna do that right now. Ever since the attack on your unit, uh, the gosh, there's a ton more. What do you mean? Those of your men who survived traveled far and wide. They fought throughout the world. In fact, they're part of the reason we have all these PFs now. Every one of them suffered their own phantom pain from losing them. Talking about you wherever they went helped to heal their wounds. Your actions and words, your legend, has been told on every battlefield they've set foot on. Obviously, as the tales have spread, the truth's been distorted, painted over. Big Boss sacrificed himself to show us the threat that Cypher poses. He sounded a warning, so it goes. A warning? Too much power destroys the hands that hold it. Apparently, you chose to be a living example of that. I never said any of that. The moment any truth is passed on, it starts turning into fiction. The problem is, fiction inspires people more than facts. To the world, you're now the legendary mercenary Big Boss. The lessons you've taught the PFs are the reason they're sure enough. spread. They're the reason they've survived. And you know what they all aspire to? To one day go nuclear, just like you did. And stand up to Cypher. Of all the stupid things you can do, they'll never understand what you really wanted. Heroes are misunderstood. It takes a man of the same caliber to understand what drives them. Bottom line is, these guys want to be like their hero, Big Boss. And deep down, they all have their eyes on nuclear weapons. They say that a nuke is the only means of standing against Cypher. But these days, it's becoming little more than a slogan to rally the troops and survive in a cutthroat business. Currently, there are three major PFs who've expanded into Central Africa. CFA, Rogue Coyote, and Zero Risk Security. HEC's investigations have shown there's almost no overlap between their areas of operation. It's not so much a turf war, more like they have a gentleman's agreement. If you do cross paths with them, you probably won't have to face more than one at a time. Still, I'll expect a walk in the park. The CFA, Contract Forces of Africa. These guys are a major player. Their head office is in Pretoria, South Africa. That's also where the South African Defense Force is headquartered. We think the two are closely connected. An HEC investigation revealed that most of the CFA's operators are former SADF soldiers. South Africa has been locked in struggles with neighboring regimes for years. You captured an enemy vehicle. Just like weapons and items, you can use your iDroid to have vehicles you've extracted airdropped in. You can also let members of the combat unit use them on dispatch missions. Do not underestimate them. Within the CFA is a company of soldiers made up mainly of locally hired operators. They speak Afrikaans to communicate with personnel from the CFA. But if you notice any speaking the local language, that's them. Though hired from the local population, they were originally part of a paramilitary group. So they'll have plenty of combat experience. And unlike their days shooting junkyard rifles out of beat-up pickup trucks, the CFA now supplies them with the latest gear from the West. On top of that, they've been combat trained by the South African Army. All that adds up to a much stronger fighting force. So don't brush them off. Look at the Angola Zaire border region. The east bank of the Muneni River in particular. It's a microcosm of a problem that stretches all across Africa. There's a civil war going on in Angola, fought between the government MPLA and the Western-backed UNITA. Zaire is still a dictatorship under President Mobutu, but numerous uprisings have broken out in its remote regions. With all the trouble elsewhere keeping their hands full, neither government has control over their side of the border. They depend on militias and PFs, as do the rebels. Government forces, guerrillas, militants, Groups of all shapes and sizes hawk whatever resources they can to hire PFs. Conflict brings PFs. PFs expand the war zone, and more conflicts erupt in a continuous chain reaction. <laughs> Sounds like our kind of work. Mother base could grow by leaps and bounds.
All right. So I don't know what the fuck was up with Paz. I mean, I don't know. I'm thinking, like, she looks exactly the same. Her shit hasn't healed. Like, I'm just saying. Please select a mission. Either way, this has went on much longer than I expected it to. So, I need to, like, I need to bounce, like, right now. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm out of here. Bye-bye.